scoring. And again, Thomas, who's uh, in the top 20 in the nation in scoring right now, averaging 20.3 a game, has 12 in the first half. Ended up making six field goals in 11 attempts. He had five rebounds as well. And he'll well, start we in the second get, half. We got to keep more in the game. We got to get Rector going a little bit. We got Aggies go to a zone with Jalen out at the top. So they lob it off free throw line to Thibodeau. Back to Thomas on the angle right, and he skips at cross court. Now on the baseline, Gill shot from 15, no good. Fought for a rebound, uh, knocked around, and finally McEwen gets it. McEwen brings it down to the left side. He accelerates on Thomas. He goes in on Thomas. He gets the ball blocked away, and they call the foul. Bailed him Ooh. out. Looked like the ball got top of the ball, hit him off the shoulder and the head. Foul is on Eric Thomas, and that'll be his first, or second, I'm sorry. I do like the aggressiveness. Go get it. Let's get something started. And Kobe did kind of pick up that aggressiveness. Yes, he did. So he gets two free throws here to try to get to double figures. His high arc of free throw, no good this time. So he made his first three. So that means he's now made 18 out of his last 26 free throws after that miserable start at the start of the year. One more for the freshman, and he makes that one, rattles it in. Utah State by three. 34-31, they extend the defense with that zone. Jalen Moore trying to trap, and the ball dribbled away by Broyles out of bounds. So they force the turnover. That has to be good right there. Mm -hmm. Aggies, remember, had eight turnovers in the first half like they've done before. They come in bundles. They didn't get any more in the first half other than the eight That's they had right. early. They slowed that down good, I thought. Rector out on the left. High post pass, Darginton. Back, oh boy, Norby got open there right after Darginton threw the ball away. Cross court comes to Jalen. A three look, didn't take it. Shovel it back now to McEwen. Kobe over to the left to Rector again. Dribble drive by Shane. He drives all the way to the basket. Left hand layup, nobody picked him up, it's good. He, he can get there. Uh, this is a little spurt we need right now, Al. Right Aggies here. by five, inside to Poe. Poe against Janicek, his turnaround banker hook. It drops oh. back in, it went off the glass one time and then went back in. Nice little jump hook off a of bank. 36-33. He transferred in from Vincennes, Vincennes Junior yeah. College. South Sudan, I don't know where he's lived in the United States. There's a group of uh, people from Sudan who do live in Baton Rouge, where Norby has, uh, where uh, Gore lived. Yeah. Then up in, in Minnesota. Also in Indianapolis. Maybe yeah. he's from Indianapolis. Eight to shoot for Rector. Rector to uh, or Norby, and he has the ball ripped away. He flips it back in the air. Fought for, and it's a turnover. There the Aggies do turn it over. Down the floor they come. And a long shot by Gill. Three-point try. No good. Slapped by McEwen over to Janicek. Now it's McEwen, cross-court director, who flies to the basket, hangs, and gets the shot blocked away, but they're going to call the foul. I thought he got all leather on the block, but he got him down low on the body. Great floor game for Rector. He was laying on the floor down here. That's what set him up for the rebound. He got clobbered on a rebound, and now he got drilled on the floor. So maybe we'll get his blood going. He got thumbs up, for Coach. He's all right. 36-33 the score. Bags up by three, and Rector goes to the foul line. Shane's foul shot good. See that? He He's also good. makes them when you need him, doesn't he? he <laughs> yes, he does. And he needs to do better at free throwing all the time. All the time, yeah. For a point. Yep, second one. He's there got them both go. there. So he's got seven. 38-33. Aggies again by five. A little pressure again in the backcourt here with Moore at the head. They try to trap the ball near the timeline. Now Boyles gets it across the timeline, and they back back into that zone defense with Jalen Moore right out of the front. So the one, two, two. Two minutes into the second half, Broyles over here to the left to Gill. Gill's missed a couple shots already this half. Now Broyles will launch the three on the right angle, and he makes it. That's only his fifth make of the year. Can't give him that open of a shot, can you? Nobody was in 10 feet of him. 38-36, they bring it back to two just like that. Here's a cross-court pass. McEwen got a hand on it enough to knock it down. Go back and get it. Cross-court now to Rector. Rector lob, Jalen in deep. Jalen spins out of the low deep trap, and then he drives back That's in, and it. one hand pull. Drops. Boy, that was a shooter's touch. Gets double figures for his 23rd straight game, I think it is. Aggies now 40 to 36. Royals back out front. Yeah, more now double figures. 23 straight games. Pass overplayed by Jalen. Almost knocked it out of bounds to try to get it to Thomas. He did knock it out. 17 17 left. Shot clock at 18 for the privateers. UNO will inbound the ball. Cross court with Thomas in front of Big Blue over there. Get it out to Broyles. Now to Gill. Back to Broyles on the angle right. Got to stay with that three-point shooter. Free throw line pass, and there's a jump over the top by Rector trying to make the steal. And the Aggies are saying, Shane, you don't need to do that. Yeah, he's the trying second to. foul. 
I like him sealing down low. I don't like it up over the shoulder. So now they'll inbound the ball with a fresh 30. Where the shot clock was winding. They underneath the basket and drive Gill for the lay-in from Broyles. So it's 40 to 38. Two-point ball game. Three minutes into the second half. Utah State by two. Rector across the timeline for the Aggies. Comes to McEwen. Right-hand side to Jalen Moore. Moore gets it back out front to Rector. Down low, Dargenton screens. Jalen pops out to the left corner. Thomas with him, goes low to Norby. Janicek with it, Pope behind him. Now Norby backs, he backs, he drives, he hooks, he's got it. It just takes him a little while to decide what he's gonna do with it. Quickly, Gill in the front court doesn't take the shot this time quickly. Four point lead USU, come back to Broyles on the angle outside the arc. Comes back to the left to Gustavius Gill, off to Thomas. Thomas dribbles, drives the baseline on Jalen, spins around underneath in traffic, they block it away, and then he knocked it out of bounds. No, the Aggies knock it out of bounds. Thomas thought he got fouled. That was a power play that was nowhere to go, but he insisted on it. And he put it up, and the Aggies blocked Good it defense. away. And I thought it looked like Thomas had knocked yeah. it out, but then they just said that the Aggies blocked it, so they'll give it back to New Orleans at 12 to shoot. All right, Broyles goes out to Gill on the inbounds play. Now Gill goes low to a posted up Thibodeau who hooks it up, it won't go, and Thibodeau fought the rebound away from Dargenton. Throws it back to the driven drive by Bro Broyles, blocked by Dargenton, rebounded by Perry for the Aggies. Lead pass thrown away by Julian, picked off by Gill. Gill goes to Broyles, Broyles to Thibodeau, back to Broyles, lay it up, no good, rebound by Thomas, and he gets fouled by Julian Perry. Julian threw the ball away, trying to go for the home run at the other end, and he fouled at the other end. Now we have a media timeout at 15 minutes and 57 seconds wow. to play. Four point lead Utah State, 42-38. We're still in the mud, Coach, a little bit. We are. We're just, <laughs> I felt like we were at five point, we were ready to go. Didn't go. This is the Utah State Aggie Network. Wow. State Cash Valley Bank with the, all your financial help. And here's an interesting stat for you, Coach. We do have 10 turnovers, not handling it well as a team. But your point guards, Rector and McEwen, have one yeah. between them. The wrong people handling the ball, huh? Or passing it or trying to yeah. do something with it. Julian Perry let that one fly up the floor 60 feet on that pass. It was easily picked up by Gill and set up an easy play for them. Yeah, think of the muffs on our way to the basket and they're trying to pass interiorly. It's just, I don't know. That's a good stat, though. I mean, our point guards need to take over. We need to handle that outside. Three for three shooting this half. And on the other side, New Orleans three out of nine, but still the Aggies have only, you know, built it to a four-point lead. It was two at the half, and now they're at the foul line to make it two again, and it's Thomas who goes up there, and he is a guy who, again, shoots seven free throws a game on average, makes 78%. He's already missed one free throw in this game, so you figure he might be ready to make two in a row. Poe and... Janicek being told that no more, says Michael Greenstein, of whatever they yeah, were doing. Whatever. Jockeying on that foul line. Free throw by Thomas, good. So Thomas's first point second half gives him 13 in the game. Like we said, he hasn't had a game lower than 17 yeah, this year. Well, he won't tonight, probably. One more for the transfer, and he misses the free throw, so he's only, again, one out of three at the foul line. Makes it a three-point ball game as Dargenton rebounds. 15.50 to go. McEwen is at the point. He's now running the point for the Aggies. Right hand wing pass to Jalen Moore. Dargenton posted up, hands it off to Julian. Perry comes around to the right, goes to the free throw line, goes right back down the middle and lays it in. Great move, went to the left, crossed the, crossed the key and came on the right side. First basket of the game for JP and it's 44, 39. Aggies get their five point lead back again, the biggest. Out on the left hand side, Broyles, low pass to Thomas. Thomas looking. Fakes on Jalen, doesn't shoot. Goes back now with 14 to shoot to Boyles. Kevin Boyles out between the circles. Kevin gives up a dribble drive. That was Fry on the run. There's Zeno with that high arc. He doesn't get an air ball. Picked up by McEwen. Lead close. pass Jalen on the left. Moore brings it up in the left wing. Gets it down low to Janicek. Norby against Post. Spins, goes back to the right side. Now goes back to the left. Now spins back to the left. To the left hand hook. Good. He's smooth in there with that. He's uh, under control. I like that. He's got seven, and it's 46-39. Aggies have their biggest lead. Now it's Fry bringing it over to the left-hand wing. Brings Broyles out front. Pass it to Thomas' free throw line. Thomas turns around, faces the basket, drives, doesn't shoot it. 
Goes Broyles in the corner, dribble drive on Julian Perry, and it's an offensive foul. He pushed him away. I thought that was excellent defense. He was in front of him even though he was moving. He had position all the way. So Julian Perry gets wiped out on the baseline and a foul called on Broyles. Good little impact by Julian here in the game. I'd like to see that. So now Poe goes out, Broyles goes out, Thibodeau back in, Gill back in. 14-36 still to play. Utah State's build it to a seven-point lead now. And McEwen across the timeline. Kobe bounce pass on the wing to Julian Perry. Perry covered by Gill. Hand it off now to Jalen. Screen, Jalen goes back to the left. He leans in, and we're going to get a blocking call. It was close. It's going to be Fry that gets the blocking call as the attack of the basket by Jalen Moore. So Jalen will be at the foul line. Aggie basketball brought to you in part by Alpine Home Medical. We bring wellness home, the premier one-stop shop for home medical equipment and service provider. And they can help improve the everyday life of everybody in the family community who needs help with home medical needs. All right, Jalen Moore, free throw line to shoot two. Free throw by Jalen, good. Moore has 11. Remember, he needed 18 tonight to pass Spencer Nelson yeah. to become the 19th all-time leading scorer. Spencer might pull him out before he gets that. What do you think? <laughs> He's got a say over there, doesn't he? Yeah, he on might. the Aggie bench of <laughs> the coaching staff. And Jalen, second one, finally does drop in, and the Aggies have built it to a nine-point lead. Yeah, that's it. That's comfortable. I think our effort's a little better right now. We're trying to... 48-39. Backdoor pass deflected by Janicek, picked up by Dargenton. So an active hand by Norby. Kept the ball alive on the backdoor cut. Bringing it down, it's McEwen, crossover, runs into the man, charging. No question about that one. Setting up to take the charge on that play was Gill. Kobe gets his first foul. The Aggies have turned it over now 11 times in the yeah. game. That's about the fourth time, Mike, at recollection is that we've taken the ball from the inbounds pass all the way for the shot. I don't know that I like that so much. Six, point, uh, six minutes into the game, a nine-point lead. Utah State still playing that zone defense. Over on the right, Fry hits Thomas. In deep, he finds Zeno in traffic. Muscle it up, miss it. Jalen jumps way out to get the There's rebound. There's a rebound for you. Jalen now, long lead pass for Norby, picked off by Gill. Another time that Gill picks off a length of the floor pass. And now he brings it on the run. He goes all the way and scoops it up and missed it. And the rebound volleyballs off to McEwitt. Now the Aggies come down with the ball. Now Kobe goes down the left, goes in against Thibodeau, shot it way too short. Rebound off to Fry. Long lead pass, he finds Zeno who lays it up and in, finally. And then a timeout called by Coach Schlesinger. So we get our coach's timeout for a full 60 seconds here. Utah State 48-41, the Aggies with a seven point lead, 13-23 to go. We'll be back in a moment. This is the Utah State Aggie Network. Weaver State game. It is Young Alumni Night. You can purchase a $5 ticket. You go to utahstateaggies.com, use the promo code YANIGHT16. Or you can also, of course, check the Spectrum ticket office and find out more tomorrow at 797-0305. But that's Wednesday night at 7. For that one, then uh, Boise, of course, will be here a week from Wednesday night. We'll, our next coaches show will be at Pizza Pie Cafe on the night after Christmas on the 26th. Remember, Tuesdays all day long, 5.55, so tomorrow, the great pizza buffet, and all you can eat there is 5.55, all day Tuesdays at Pizza Pie Cafe. And we'll be there next Monday after Christmas for our next coaches show. Coach uh, Durier will join with us then, and maybe a player. Aggies by seven. Biggest lead's been nine. Haven't had a lead change this half. No, I think the Aggies have really dominated a little bit, but we just, I don't know. Here's a little change of the defense. See a little pressure at the timeline, then they back off into man defense. So they pressured, bring it up, then they drop back to man. McEwen and yo-yoing, he's playing the point. Kobe still with the ball, still dribbling it. Nobody's cutting to get the ball to him. 11 to shoot, they go to Julian Perry. He drives on his man, he drives it down in deep. Throws it off to McEwen in the corner for three, right corner, no, didn't get the three. Thibodeau got the rebound. He outlets over here on this sideline to Gill. Gill brings it up and leads it back down the middle to Fry. Fry's been a good off the base player yeah, for them, hasn't and he? And you can tell his experience. Here's a foul on Julian Perry as Fry's trying to cut the basket. 
Julian held him. You could tell that he's an experienced guy and he had yeah. to sit out the first semester, but I'm sure he's practicing with him. He's physical a lot like Taylor or uh, like uh, Thomas. So now into the game comes Gore Barnaba and going out is Alex Gargenton. All right. Fry inbounds to Gill and a three-pointer on the left wing. He rattled it, it wouldn't stay. Rebound Julian Perry. Julian gets an opt out of McEwen and he slows it down. 48-41. Tim Durier with the play call. It is set call he wants here. Boy, don't you think you got to get the ball? Oh, there we go. Look yep. who's on. Jalen on the right. Goes low to Gore. Barnabas backs over his man and then banks it up too hard. Wide open shot as he had the guy away. He could have walked it. it yeah, in. he could have gone in and just dunked it. Gore just has no confidence shooting the basketball right now. Inside. He and Dargenton yep. have no confidence shooting it. Yeah. 12-13 to go. They got to make some in games. They make them in practice, but they can't make them in games. Fry over here, goes down on Perry, leans in, puts it up. No, the follow Thibodeau, yes. Here they come again. 48-43 as we go under 12 minutes to play. They cut it back to five. All right, it is McEwen again out front. Man-to-man -man defense for the Privateers. Barnabas, now we got a foul and a holding call on Thomas, holding on to Jalen. That'll be the third foul on Eric Thomas, and we'll have a media timeout. Team foul number five this half, or number four this half. All right, the Aggies lead at 48-43, and they'll have a fresh 30 when we get the uh, timeout done. When we come back, 11.48 to go. This is the Utah State Aggies. Much better than that. Most of the game, they're five for 16 this half. Still, they've cut it back to five after the Aggies had the nine-point lead at 48-39. We have 11.48 to play in the ball game. Aggie basketball brought to you by Daryl's Appliance. Remember, it's beautiful downtown Benson where Daryl's Appliance is. All the appliances you need, fridges, freezers, washers, dryers, ranges, dishwashers, and KitchenAid, Maytag, Whirlpool, you name it. They've got the great names. Daryl's Appliance, beautiful downtown Benson. Here's some scores. Southern Illinois leads UNLV early, 7-3. That will finish the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge. And oh, right now okay. it's 5-4 for the Missouri Valley. So the best the conference is going to have is a tie. Yeah. It's at Vegas tonight. Colorado State's now taking the lead in the second half on Loyola, 50 to 45. And Air Force and Colorado tied 41 all at Falcons at the, uh, the Kloon Arena. Inbound the ball to Barnaba. Gore bounced it off. Tough catch for Kobe in the left corner. Kobe driving and gets muscled by Fry for a foul. Fry trying to force off. As he said, he's a physical guy. Very, yeah. Uh, he'll pound you, but there's really not a lot, nowhere to go over there. It's really tough in the baseline, but he... So Sam Merrill checks in for Jalen Moore with 11.42 to go and still a five-point ball game and another 30 seconds for the Aggies. That's the sixth foul now on them this half. All right, inbound the ball, McEwen. Kobe lobs for uh, Perry, comes cross-court to Janicek. He flares it back over to Jalen, or I'm sorry, to Julian. Now Barnaba cross-court to Merrill. Outside the arc, it goes to McEwen. Lob for Janicek oh. way over his head, but uh, they uh. touch the ball out of bounds. Aggies get a break. Second reflection dropped out, but that was a, he was open mm -hmm. if you get the ball to him. Pass a little too high. Now the Aggies have 20 to shoot on that deflection by Gill, couldn't get the interception. Perry lobs for Norby. Norby goes over to McEwen, flares it off to Perry. Three-pointer here on the right angle. He thought he had it, he missed it. He thought he'd made it. Rebound run down in the corner by Poe. Poe front shot. court, yeah, That's it is. Gets shot. the front court to Gill. All right, Gill high post pass Thibodeau. Thibodeau lobs it low and finds Poe and fouled by Janicek. Norby gets his third foul. Aggies have five fouls this half with 11-12 to play, and it'll be Poe at the foul line. Poe 61.5% on the year. He blocked five shots in their lost Oklahoma State, so he can shoot the, the blue be a shot he's blocker. He's got a little energy bunny there, I think. McCour Poe shoots the free throw and makes it. He has seven points in this game. He averages 5.1 and about five rebounds. And they're leading shot blocker. So now Rector is in and queuing out for Utah State. 48-44, so the Aggies yeah, had the nine-point lead, and now they've scored five in a row, and it's six in a row. Poe cuts it down to a three-point game. Yeah, well, they came back. If that, that steal, that bad long pass play, and they ended up with the ball, called the timeout, stopped the bleeding. 11-10 to play. Sam Merrill, look to the right, goes back to the left with a penetrating drive down the left side and put up a banking runner, it's good. That's his game, I'll tell you. Six for Merrill, 50 to 45, five point ball game. 
Aggies by five. In front of their bench, Fry gives it up, goes out front to Gill. Aggies go back to man-to-man -man defense now. Fry on the wing, over is played by Gore, and he almost swiped the ball but knocked it out of bounds, and it goes back to the Privateers at 15 to shoot. And now Quinn Taylor's gonna come in for Norby. Janicek will have to leave with the three fouls. Quinn played well in the first half at five points yeah, and five rebounds. Big to keep it going. Aggies need that kind of spurt here. Yeah, we need some toughness on the inside, just physical toughness. I know they're good kids and trying hard, but... Rosa back into the game. Tough game. Gets a tough pass from Thibodeau about his chin. <laughs> At 100 miles an Seven hour. to shoot. Cross court to Fry with five to shoot. Fry gets the screen. Drives on Shane Rector. Tries to separate from him. Fall away shot. Nope. It's a shot clock violation. He didn't know it. So they give up the ball. It's right in front of their bench. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, right in the front of the bench. Right looking right at the clock. He's got the same angle we do. 10-24 left to go as the Aggies inbound the ball, leading by five. Utah State 50-45. to Rector across the stripe. Right-hand side to Julian Perry in front of the Aggie bench. Merrill down the middle. Screen from Taylor. Now it's left-hand side to Barnaba. Shot clock at 18. Gore to the free throw line. Cross court finds Rector. Corner to Merrill. Fake the three. Merrill drives it into the key. Finds a man over on the left hand side. The shot is by Perry again. He thought he'd made it. He's missed two that he thought he made. Rebound comes down to Fry. Fry front court to Gill. Gill says, I'm not going down low to you. Thibodeau take a drive on Barnaba. Go in the corner. Now dribble drive over here by Rossi. Gets it back out front. Now the shot clock is at. 14, comes back to Rosa in front of their bench. He will drive on Rector, and Rector steals the ball. Rector comes out of the backcourt with it. Rector brings it down the right. Rector goes down the middle to Quinn Taylor. One dribble in traffic, and they steal the ball from Quinn Taylor. Yeah, took it right away And from then him. they throw it down to Gill, who's by himself, and he lays it up and in. And what a change that was. Taylor was so surprised to get the ball from Rector that he and dropped he, it And right then he there. dribbled it, though, yeah. too. He, he wanted right it down rather than put it up. Yep. Yep. 50 to 47. Passes actually at about his belt buckle. Yeah. And there's an overplay swipe. Aggies turn it over again. Rector threw the ball right to Poe. 9.05 to play. Three point ball game again. Fry between the circles. They're playing without Thomas with three fouls. Here comes the Aggies. Down in the corner, dribble drive by Gill underneath the basket. He lost it, he picked it back up, walked into his own drop dribble and laid it in and it's a one point game. 50 to 49, we have a timeout, Aggies. So a 30 second coach's timeout here with 8.46 to play. 50, Utah State 49 for, again, the New Orleans Privateers. This is the Aggie basket 49. They had a 48 to 39 lead, their biggest of nine. They've scored two points since then. And they've, again, now bundled the turnovers all together. They have 14 yeah. now in the game. Three quick ones right here, really yep. took the air out of it for us. Gardenton checks back in. Ganesic checks in. Jalen Moore checks in. McEwen will be the point guard. Daggy basketball brought to you by Columbus Travel. Remember, Cruz Wilderness, Alaska, 599. Get that set up for this next year with the help of Columbus Travel. Jalen out on the right-hand wing, and Thomas is back in with the three fouls, too. Over on the left to McEwen. Shot clock at 14. Free to line area. Jalen Moore gets it. Comes to the right-hand side. Looks for Norby with nine. Zip it cross court. Merrill for three out of the left corner. Got it. Jalen Moore, nice skip pass. Yeah, nine nice play for Merrill. Back. Yeah, Merrill's great off the bench tonight. 53-49. Break think it was that interview you had with him. Got him going. Cameron Reed. Well, I'm glad he got that elbow taken care of <laughs> so he could shoot it. A dribble drive all the way to the basket. Broyles shot it too hard, and then Thibodeau is fouled on the rebound. By Merrill. I think Sam gets it, and it'll be one and one. That's the sixth team foul on the Aggies. No, they called it on Barnaba. Oh, did they? Really? Ball be out of bounds to the Privateers. That's the sixth foul on the Aggies. Both teams have six fouls. It has been a little foul free. It has, that hasn't been overdone, has it? Scoreboard, uh, scores table polling over Michael Greenstein. I think it, oh, yeah, foul was on Sam Merrill. Yeah, it was. So Merrill gets his third foul because Somebody. Gore's not in the game. <laughs> so it had to be a foul on three, not 13. All right, the inbound the ball. Low pass, Thomas gets it, knives to the basket, missed the layup, slapped by McEwen, picked up by Poe. Poe held on to it. Three-point shot on the right is short, and rebound by Gargenton for the Aggies. Three-pointer by Reed. Better rebound. 53-49, Ags by four, Gargenton the trailer. Alex fakes the handoff, drives, puts it up with the scoop, it won't drop, he'll be at the foul line. He can't finish at the rim, but he gets fouled on the drive, and there's the fourth foul on Aaron Thomas. Nice move. 
Yeah, he looked like he was going to hand it off to Merrill, and then he just yeah, accelerated. They, they stepped off of him, and he took it to the well. Fakes the handoff and drives it. Now Dargenton, you got to knock down some free throws. 7.49 to play, 53-49, Utah State by four, and this is the Utah State at Martinique. He scored 14 against Purdue. Since then, in the five games since, he has scored a total. Now it's six games, 13. 13 in total. Six, 14 and one, that's good. Yeah. He, well, he has averaged almost six rebounds a game over the last yeah. three. He, just he has got five a, tonight. Just got a very nice rebound a minute ago. Finally climbed the ladder and got, it and got after it. But now he'll be at the foul line, which has been a little bit of a bugaboo for him. And again, hasn't been great for the Aggie team, although tonight 10 out of 13, 77%, much better than the season 64.5% for the Aggies at the line. Rebounds are now 28-27. Utah State leads by one in that department, but 14 turnovers for the Aggies. Yeah, it's too many. 12 now for. They came in clusters, remember? Yep. Started the game and then this. Eight and didn't have any for a long, long time. So Dargenton will shoot two, fouled on the shot. Thomas got his fourth foul and he is out of the game again now for Coach Schlesinger, their leading scorer. All right, Alex shoots the free throw, no good. He just doesn't have any kind of feel of a shooter at all uh, right no. now. And I think you mentioned it earlier, and that's confidence. Yep, I mean, it is. It's have all. Confidence. You just ha don't have to think about that's the shot. Right, then you're right. a much better player. There you Second go. one got it. He gets his first point of the game. Gives the Aggies a five-point lead with 7.45 to go, 54-49. All right, back to that zone defense with Jalen at the head. And Gill is yo-yoing out on the left-hand wing. Go to Broyles over the right. Running the baseline is their shooter. Uh, again, uh, Reed but he hasn't made them tonight. Now Gill backs back, almost walks with it. Pass it free to line, Thibodeau running the baseline, Reed turn around, hook it up and miss it, and Dargenton had the rebound, slapped out of his arms, and then picked up by McEwen, and I think the, the foul will be on... Uh, I don't think there's, oh yeah, there he yeah, is. Yeah, there's a foul. 13. They called it on Poe. Poe. Got the foul. And they so close him, they hit him. Yeah, McEwen got hit as he was trying to drive out of there after they missed layup there by the Young kid Cameron Reed played the last four. We mentioned he's out of Louisville. And he's made two out of 10 threes on the year, but he's missed two threes tonight. Then he missed that turnaround layup inside, so now Fry's back in. All right, Kobe McEwen at the foul line. He's been there five times, made four tonight. He has nine in the game. McEwen's high arc free throw miss. Here we go. Clutch time, the Aggies need him. They've done up there and made one out of three. Lead by five with 7.14 to play. Left-hand side pass to Gill, running the baseline, Thibodeau. Now out of the right-hand side, Fry. You gotta stick with him, because he can shoot threes, he can drive it too. Top of the key, Broyles against the zone, 11 to shoot, seven minute mark. Posted up, Poe, been in the key forever. Now the fake by Gill, they go off to Broyles, who fires up the long three as the crowd was chanting. The shot by Gill was actually the volleyball to Poe, and now a jump ball, it'll be alternating possession belonging to the privateers. Nope, the Aggies get it. Yeah, Aggies we, get it. Yeah, the scoreboard the over there says Privateers yeah, get it, but they change it from halftime. Yep, they didn't. So it is Utah State basketball. Now it'll go back to New Orleans. That's a nice for the break. Next time. We can kind of open this up a little bit here. You got to give it to the small group of students here. They counted it down where Broyles thought he had to shoot the three, <laughs> and he, sure did, did. he still had three seconds. Dump it underneath to, to Janicek. It's fought out of there on a nice play and a hustle by Gill to get it off to Broyles, another Aggie turnover. And then bring it up, Broyles on Jalen Moore. He doesn't shoot it. And then he dribbles between his legs and gets it back to Gill, who fought it out of there. He just... Just but the big guy dropped it down. Rooted it out. Again, yep. 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 On the dribble play. And then Gill is fouled by Sam Merrill with the arm bar. Sam will have his fourth foul. Sam's fouled out of one game this year. Here comes Zeno, and here comes Rector. So Rector's in for Sam Merrill. And Zeno is in the game replacing Poe. And Gill will go to the foul line. Now here's an interesting deal. He's a good three-point shooter, but he's only 14 of 27 on the year, 52% wow. at the foul line. So his one and one free throw, perfect though, right there. So he has nine, been a double figure, seven of their nine games, had two games in the 20s. He's their number 18 all-time scorer, became number 17 tonight because he scored more than three. And he makes both free throws to get double figures. 
54-51, good little player. He for is a really a strong, heady player. He's been around a lot of passing lanes. Yeah. Cut off some runs. 54-51, Ags by just three. Q and look for that lob to Jalen, not there. Now they go to Rector on the left side. Now a posted Jalen, double team down there, triple team. So McEwen's open for three out front, and he's got it. There you go. Needed that pass from Jalen out of the triple team to find McEwen for three, and then here's posted up. McEwen underneath, and he's saying to Norby, you gotta come down and cover your guy. I had to pick him up and foul him. I know, but it takes a long, they're mixed up on who's got who. Norby's got 25, he says. Well, Zeno will be at the foul line. He's 12 out of 16. So that was Jalen or Darnington. Somebody else not picking yep. up, yep, not picking up Zeno, who's not their center right now. He just, but Kobe did a good job. I mean, he did all he could, and he finally got it a little too deep. Nine out of 12 at the foul line as a team, and then they've just made those last two, so they're 11 of 14. But, oh, there's the – that's an air ball because it didn't hit the rim. It went to the left side of the rim. This that is that high, high arc shooter high guy. <laughs> and, and, you know, he's 12 out of 16 on the year. That wasn't even close. No, the wind from the student section over Somebody there. Somebody opened the tunnel. Yeah, I think 50, so. 57-51, uh, Aggies. Here's McEwen in the corner to Dargenton. Alex back out front, McEwen. Shot clock at 17, screened from Norby. And now another three by McEwen. This time missed. Long rebound, Zeno. He thought he'd made it. 57-51 still. Privateers bring the ball with five and a half. Still a ball game. They crumbled in the last five minutes against Louisiana Lafayette at home the other night. Thibodeau in the key. Goes down on Janicek and hooks it in against the foul, and Norby's got his fourth. Nice aggressive play by Thibodeau. It was. So now I, Thibodeau. You know, I think I'd let him go, not let him go, but I wouldn't foul him. I, I, you know, he's more valuable for the next five minutes than that one foul right there. Yep. Now Norby Janicek gets his fourth foul, so he and Merrill both have four. Quinn Taylor will be in. It's 57-53. Tim Durier's called the timeout here with five minutes and 24 seconds, and it looks like he's going to the full timeout. Yeah. Let me mention Aggie basketball brought to you by Angie's. Remember, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you're always going to find something very, very good and delicious. Again, they have amazing daily specials, fantastic desserts, the staff, the servers, the cooks, everybody. Just makes it feel just like home. It's where the locals eat. It's Angie's Restaurant. Bring you the Aggies basketball coverage with 524 to play in this one. Weber State Wednesday night, then the Christmas break, and then Boise State a week from Wednesday night starting conference play is what's coming Randy up. Randy Race Club is a little below the hinges this year. He's played a tough schedule. But, uh, they have. They've had a couple close games. Yeah, they haven't won. Yeah. They they were miserable at the foul line against what, are BYU. They now? Yeah, pretty close, I think. And yeah, I think they, they would have they would have maybe beaten BYU, but they went 11 for 26 at the foul line yeah, that night yeah, in Provo. Incredible. And usually, they're one of the best foul shooting teams, it seems like yeah. always. Over they the got years. some shooters there. They ought to be foul Singlin shooting. Singlin is really good yeah. shooter. Yeah, he's a good he player. can get going. He is a good player. You got to watch him. He can get on a hot streak. Four point ball game. And remember, Thibodeau at the foul line trying to finish a three point play the old way. He only has four points tonight. He's missed a free throw try. So Thibodeau now with one free throw here. 57-53, it's still a ball game. Biggest lead, the Aggies had nine. There's not been a lead change this half. Thibodeau shoots the free throw away and makes it. So he gets the three-point play, 57-54. Rector in the backcourt with McEwen, Dargenton, Moore, and Taylor for Utah State. High post pass to Alex for the Aggies. Cross court to Quinn Taylor, left side to Jalen. Screen for Jalen. Jalen drives and he's getting to get the foul. Zeno's hanging on to him, trying to turn the corner. Third on Zeno and Jalen Moore will be at the foul line. He's two for two tonight. So Jalen Moore will go to the foul line here. 11 points total for Moore in the game. I, or I guess 12. 12, 12, 12, says, yeah. 12. Yeah, 12 points. I guess we can turn that on. It keeps going on. He has 12, and McEwen has 12 to lead the X. Now here's more free throw chances. Jalen's free throw, short. Wow. Rebound, Thibodeau. That's one for four at the foul line when the Aggies have had a chance yeah, here. Down the stretch, this is key time right now. And they it? start to miss free throws, and that's what happened against Indiana State. Five minutes to play. Three-point lead. And a steal by Rector. And then the foul on Fry after they took the ball away from him prevented a dunk by Rector at the other end. So they steal the ball from Fry, and then he fouls. 
So it'll be double bonus for the Aggies now. I think he fouled Jalen after yeah, Jalen got the ball. Yeah, he tackled him. He saw him shoot that free throw. <laughs> Says if we're going to have a breakaway, I'll That's give you right another there. chance. <laughs> Aggie basketball is brought to you by the warehouse showroom at the Utah Mattress Outlet. The way they keep overhead low to save you money, they bring in all kinds of great mattresses with just slight blemishes, brand names. Free throw in by Jalen. You knew he would. Yeah. Gives him 13. Talk to the in-store sleep specialist at Utah Mattress Outlet behind the Chevron. 904 South Main and Logan bring you the game. Jalen Moore has one more. Four-point ball game. Can be five. He makes the free throw, and he does. And now Eric Thomas, their leading scorer, will come back with his four fouls and 454. He'll replace Zeno. 59-54. Five-point ball game. Jalen in the backcourt to extend a little pressure here for Utah State. Turned it with those long arms to give him a little tougher time bringing the ball up the floor. Fry still in the backcourt. Now he gets the ball to Gill, and Gill brings it across the timeline to the front 47. 19 to shoot. On the wing, it's Broyles. So they have the three guards in there with Thomas. He lobs over the top to Thibodeau. Block shot, Quinn Taylor! And Quinn gets the ball. Nice job by Quinn. Yeah, he recovered well, got the ball. Now McEwen to the front court. McEwen at the top of the key. McEwen gets it up to Rector. 20 to shoot for the Aggies. Leading by five now. Go down to 420 to play. Rector on the left to McEwen. Shot clock at 14. Kobe, back pass, tried to get Rector. He tips it back to Jalen Moore. Jalen Moore is fouled on the drive by Broyles. So Broyles will get his third, and Jalen Moore will go back to the foul line to shoot two Great more. Great recovery by Rector. Rector. He got yeah. a tip on it, then he went and tipped it one more yeah. time. Back to Jalen. Is, really the pass had a good intention on the backdoor cut, but it was way well, to the side of it. Yep. Yeah, high and wide. So with he'll four, lock, he'll lock these in. This is good. So Jalen has made four out of five free throws tonight. Now two free throws here for Moore. Next foul by the Aggies also puts the uh, Privateers into the double bonus. So here's the Aggies senior. Free throw, good again. Moore's now drilled, and he's got uh, the 10 from the field, and he's driven uh, five for the foul line. So Jalen with 15. One more for Jalen, and that's 16. That's better. That's good free throw shooting. That's what we need. 61-54. Aggies build it out to seven with 4.05 to go. Now trying to play. They're trying to play. You know what they're playing? Triangle and two. They're covering Looks Thomas, like and then they're covering the guy out front here, and they pass it over the top, and McEwen fouled Thomas. They got, they got McEwen. And the basket the is not good. It'll be two-shot foul coming up. So the foul's called on McEwen his third. They had McEwen playing Thomas, and then they had... Jalen, or I mean Rector out front playing one of the guards and everybody else is playing his own. Yeah. The Aggies have used that some. We have a timeout with 3.58 to play. 61 Aggies, 54 for New Orleans. And we'll take the full media timeout. This is the Utah State Aggie. The foul line giving the Aggies the points when they needed it to build it out to a 61-54 lead. Utah State with 3.58 to go. Aggies shooting 57% this half and look at New Orleans, 33 this half. Yeah. Aggies Our defense up. again, you know, that we mm -hmm. talked about early. 39%. The Aggies offense now up to 46.5%, which is better. But 15 turnovers, 20 baskets. Almost have as many turnovers as you have made yeah. baskets in the game. That's bad. It's taking, away, taking away a lot of opportunities, hasn't it? All right, let's look at the scores. Colorado State and Loyola are tied 62 all with 3.30 to play. And Colorado's opened it up now with 3.50 to play at Air Force. They lead 71-58 UNLV, 30-23 to over Southern Illinois in that challenge game tonight. Last we had Carolina led Washington 20 to nine in the third quarter. Thomas will shoot two because that was the 10th foul on the Aggies. The score is brought to you by Reed's Pharmacy. Here's Thomas shooting two. First one is on the way and good. Reed's Pharmacy is a compounding pharmacy providing solutions to individuals that chains do not. In Reed's Pharmacy in Smithfield, or in, I'm sorry, in Hiram. Make sure your hometown independent pharmacy, they make feeling better easy and Make sure your prescriptions are synced. Reed's Pharmacy and Hiram can do that. 2-4-5, 64-22. Both free throws in by Thomas. Then they take him out because they don't want him to get a foul on defense. Well, that's kind of interesting. 61 I think you need your best player. Yeah, but you don't want him to get his fifth foul on defense. I guess maybe don't. Maybe he's not their best defender. No. All right, dribble drive by Rector against the little guy. Puts it up, and in, what a shot! He put the English on that one off the glass as he drove on Gill and scored it. That's great. 
That is backyard a play yep. right there. 63 50 play yard is best. All right, Fry out front, high post pass Thibodeau. He's been a great assist man from that high points block. He goes low to Poe. Poe now spins on Quinn Taylor, can't shoot it. Now he's still got it, still got it. Now he puts it up and it dropped in. He didn't want to shoot it and he finally didn't score it. Banked it in. 63-58. Nothing else to do, shoot it. That's with those it. long it's arms, he can do that. All right, Rector to the front court in front of the Aggie bench with 3.09 to play. Rector back to Quinn Taylor out front. Left-hand side of McEwen. Colby now drives. Cut off at the free throw line. Shovels it off to Dargenton. Right side to Jalen. 11 to shoot. Moore working, yo-yoing it. Moore on the right side. Steps through and banks it. Got it. What a shot. That's a nice shot right there. Long lead pass. Dargenton tried to make the steal, at the, and he's called for the foul. Looked like two guys going for the ball there. I don't know if I'd call that a foul. Dargenton, the guy, the other guy was spun around and he fell yeah. down. It wasn't Dargenton hitting, but they called a foul on Alex. So that'll put at the free throw line for two free throws. Coming up, uh, Kevin Broyles, he's two for two in the game at the foul line. He was off balance yeah. spinning around and he fell down just because he was off balance. Yeah. He wasn't hit by Dargenton. Won a very good call. All right, free throws for Boyles on the way, and miss! He made two in the first half. So as a team now, New Orleans with that miss is 14 of 19. The Aggies are 15 of 21 at the foul line. It's about the same, huh? Thing is, they're a 70% free throw shooting team. The Aggies are 64 and a half coming in. Yeah. Boyles with one more charity. Missed him. Both. Jalen Moore boards. Yeah, that helps. So the Aggies still with the lead by seven and with the ball. Now in the backcourt, McEwen. They're trying to trap him. He throws it cross court to Rector. Beat the count. Now they can run the offense here. 2.35 to go. High post pass to Moore, who's made some great plays. And Rector and Moore. Now Jalen's going to drive again into the paint. Scoop of the left hand didn't go this time. And Janicek comes in to try to get the rebound. And it's loose. And it'll be alternating possession. Nope, Aggie ball because the guy's out of bounds. Laid out of bounds, yeah. He laid out of bounds with the ball as Norby fought him for the ball. Now here's Thomas in. They need his offense with 2.25 to go. Fry goes out. Merrill is in for the Aggies, another offensive guy. 2.25 left to play. Inbounded to Jalen in front of the Aggie bench. Now Sam Merrill hands it off to Rector to set up the offense here with 2.20 to go. Seven point Aggie lead off the screen. Rector top of the key. High post pass to Norby Janicek. Janicek a bad touch pass low, but the Aggies get the foul call. As McEwen tried to make the catch, he got fouled. Hey, underneath by Gill. Correct. Trying to swipe the ball from behind. So it'll be at the foul line. Kobe McEwen. McEwen has made four of six free throws on the night. He has 12 points. He has six rebounds. He has three assists for the freshman, and his free throw high arc is in. Double figures now for the last five for McEwen. Seventh time on the year. Now Fry is in for Poe with 2.12 to play. 66-58, the Aggies get it back to eight points. Remember, their biggest lead has been nine in the game, and McEwen's high arcer got it. And he has it to a nine-point Aggie lead. 2.10 yeah, to go. We're in good shape here now. Now Fry down the floor. Fry over on the left. Trying to get Thomas down low. Aggies in their zone defense. They looked low for that pass, couldn't get it, so Gill takes it out front as they go under two minutes to play. Back to the right-hand side to Fry with 14 to shoot. Fry back to Gill between the circles, 11 to shoot. Gill brings it over to the left. Gill drives down to the left-hand side and then pulls back and shoots the three. Miss, long rebound, Rector's got it. 144 to play. Rector brings it down against the defensive Gill with a minute and 40 to go. The Aggies have no the nine point lead. No hurry here. Rector finds First McEwen the on the right. McEwen spins on his man, drives it down underneath, puts it up, and yes, and he's fouled. Wow. He shot that as he went by, Al. He was under the basket. He said, he said hello him. as he went by. That's right. In. Yeah. So Kobe McEwen now will get a chance to finish a three-point play the old way, and the Aggies have their first double-digit lead of the game, 69-58 with a minute and a half. Penetration's been a, a nice thing for the Aggie offensively tonight. Yeah. Here's the timeout now for yeah. the Privateers. Here's the other interesting notes about their program. They were a me founding member of the Sun Belt Conference in 1976, and they were forced out in 1980 
because they said their arena wasn't big enough. Yeah. They played independent from 80 to 87, then they went to the America South, then the Sun Belt merged with the America South in 1991. Then they decided with their general support money gone and the students voted against it to move to Division Three in 2009. They did that in 2010, but they were back in March the next year saying we want to go back to Division One. Yes. They joined the Southland in 2013. Wow, that's a track record. In the 1978 Sun Belt final game, South Alabama, coached by Cliff Ellis, held the ball against New Orleans. New Orleans won the game 22 to 20, oh and that is what they think brought the shot clock into college basketball the next year. The Sun Belt said, we're playing with it. What year, what year was that? That was 1978. Yeah. And then the Sun Belt brought the shot clock in the next year as the first league to use it and experiment, and then everybody picked it up after that. But they lost to Old Dominion in the 1975 22. title game in Division II. I didn't like that, did it? That affected the game. And that was the year when the Aggies went down and beat them down there, but they still played the Division II title game. Now the three-point play finished by McEwen. And the Aggies have a 12-point lead, minute 27 to go in the ball game. Across the timeline, Broyles leaves it back for Fry. Now Broyles on the left-hand wing against the Aggie zone. Pass it off, free throw line to Thibodeau. Cut to the basket, Thomas, and he'll dunk easily as nobody picked him up on the diagonal drive. 70 to 60 with 110. Inbound the ball, Rector made a tough catch against Gill. Rector to the front court, cut through, and they foul him trying to make the steal. It'll be Broyles who got him. Broyles will get his fourth foul, and Shane Rector will be at the foul line to shoot two with 103 to go, 70 to 60 to score. That basket by Thomas now gives him 17, which is right at where he's been his low mark all year long. Yeah. Well, we've done a good job on him because he can get off and we held that down. He's a 60% free th field goal shooter. The Aggies have held him to seven for 14. Rector's free throw, sits on the rim and drops off. Well, it's not for the league or the win. Yeah, so, that's, you know. that's the reason why it seems like. <laughs> hey, no regrets buying experience always from Murdoch Hyundai and Volkswagen. He makes the second, gives the Aggies an 11 point lead. Five day exchange policy. Every Hyundai comes with America's best warranty. You gotta come see us, Murdoch Hyundai. One minute left, Aggies by 11. Got to score quickly, the privateers do. Fry over here to Gill. Gill goes around it, drives the basket, throw it over in the corner to Boyles. He'll shoot the three out of the right corner. He missed it, the long rebound, Thomas. Thomas with 30 seconds off the shot clock again. A long three by Gill out on the right, missed it. Off the hand of the rebound, grabbed by Thomas again. He'll drive back underneath, he puts it up. He got fouled, Dargenton or Janicek. I think it's gonna be Dargenton, yes, fouled him. Stop the clock, which you don't want to have happen with 37.9 no, to go. It's all right. They haven't got time to make up the nine, but that's why, that's why kind of we're standing around on the rebound. Get up and get a rebound and end this thing. A couple of longer rebounds came out. All right, the free throw by Thomas here is good. Gives him 18. His average is 20.3, and here's Sam Merrill in for Dargenton to be a little more of a smaller team, ball handling, and if they get fouled, Merrill makes free throws. We're all right with this now. 71-61 with 37.9. Thomas with the second one, good. Now into the game comes Matthew Giles, a 5'10", 165 junior out of Braithwaite, Louisiana. He had 50 points in a high school game once playing in Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a big adjustment. He's played the last six. He has not scored. And now the Aggies use just about their last time out of the night with 37.9 to go to set it up here because they know they're going to get attacked real fast. Got to prolong the game if you're, yeah. again, the guys in silver tonight. They'll try. They'll see. We'll see what they do. Aggies, if they score 70 or more this year, are 5-0. and oh. They're at 71 right now. Well, we're in good shape. This has been a struggling win, but uh, it's a win. That's all you want this time of the year. Rector with 10, McEwen 17, Moore with 18. Jalen had his moments both halves that really paced the Aggies when they needed it. Early they needed offense. He gave it to them, and then here in the second half he did. And I think Quinn Taylor has been very good tonight. Yeah, and Merrill's got nine. I mean, he's just yep. a point away. If he could get a bucket here, he'd be a double figure. So that's that guard line doing very well again with Jalen. All right, Jalen will inbound the ball for the Aggies. Merrill runs to the ball, not there. They throw the long lead pass down to Rector. Rector gets it against Giles, gets fouled, and scores! So the foul on Giles, the basket is by Rector, and Rector will be at the foul line. So now Thomas with the four fouls comes back in. Quinn Taylor comes back in for Janicek. 
So it'll be Rector at the foul line to try to add on. That assist from Jalen Moore was his fourth of the night on that long lead pass. And Rector's free throws in. Aggie lead back to 12. Long lead pass down to Thomas, and Thomas puts it up on Quinn Taylor, and he scores and fouled, and you don't want to stop the clock there. But he's, We're building up his uh, yeah, he's, scoring average. He's going to get up there He's now. over 20 now. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Thomas now, I think, to 21 with that basket at 74-64. Now Merrill Janicek offensively come in. Quinn Taylor got beat down the sidelines with that long pass, and the Aggies, he was in no man's land there. 32.3 to go, so 74-64, it's a 10-pointer. Thomas could make it nine, and he doesn't. And Thibodeau knocks the rebound where Thomas tried to save it in the corner. He does, he throws it out to Broyles. Left-hand side, Gill for three on the left, it's short. Rebound gr grabbed by McEwen, and he gets Whoa. tackled hard by Thibodeau. Thibodeau kind of lost his footing as he went in after him there for yeah, the foul. I think they both know that was kind of a stumble bumble. So 23.7, 74-64. It'll be McEwen at the free throw line. So uh, I don't think that's five on Thibodeau, is it? Or no, but it he's is. going out. So he Thibodeau took is his shirt out. Off and went out. And <laughs> he took his shirt off. <laughs> well, he untucked it and okay. ready to go. So I hope he's not shirtless down there. Zeno checks in from Beaumont, Texas. And now it's... McEwen at the foul line, shooting two with 23.7. So they're prolonging the game, but the Aggies finally are making free throws. Yeah, we're going to make it a route. This is probably going to be a high water mark for the <laughs> Aggies at the foul line all year. What are we at? We're McEwen is, I think we're seven out of 10, and he, that gives him now about 20 made free throws by the Aggies tonight, 27 attempts. Very good. 76-64. Pass it off to Gill. Gill will drive it to the paint. Runner, banker, good, and he got the foul. So the clock stops again as Gill drives it to the basket and keeps it going with 16.1 back to 10. So McEwen got the foul, his fourth. And it'll be Gill at the foul line. Christavius Gill, he became their 17th leading all-time scorer tonight. He's a preseason second team All-Southland player. Been Good a, little player. Been a starter for almost his entire career, playing for Coach Schlesinger. Free throw is no good. Fought for a rebound. McEwen had it. Then Janicek had it, and it dropped out of bounds, and they say it belongs to Utah State with 13.1. So the Aggies lead 10, trying to get him out of the ball here, 76-66, trying to finish it off. More to Rector in the backcourt. Now they, they're not, they're not going to pressure him. Yep, he goes under 10 seconds, and that'll be it. So Rector just dribbles away the basketball game, and it's a 76-66 Utah State win over the Privateers of New Orleans. The Aggies go to six and four, never behind in the second half after we had all the lead changes in the first half. Played better in the second half, a little more intensity. They kind of went out and got the game by the throat. Timeout for station identification for 10 seconds right here. We break for 10 on the Utah State Aggies.